So Rodney Dangerfield, uh, his big thing was, you know, I, I don't get no respect. He had a signature red tie. I don't get no respect. Well, I can tell you that mask ventilation, when it comes to airway management, is the I don't get no respect kind of a thing. When people talk about managing the airway, it's always like, let's intubate. Let's put the laryngoscope in. I'm going to intubate. I got to get the tube in and stuff. Well, you got to walk before you run. And uh, mask ventilation will probably actually save more lives than intubating in the course of your career. So let's not leap into intubating. Let's focus on good mask ventilation. Mask ventilation will, first of all, that's the first thing you can do. You can always mask ventilate you know, while they're getting the equipment. That'll often stabilize your patient. It'll often make intubating easier. And why is that? If you're trying to intubate someone and they're desaturating, they're going to, to hell in a handbasket, you know, your head is going to not be particularly relaxed. Whereas if you can mask someone up first and get their sat at least up somewhere in the 90s, you're going to be much more relaxed when it comes to intubating. So masking is something we need to think about and, and master uh, and, and focus on when it comes to airway management. It's not something to be skipped or just like, oh, that's just squeezing the bag. It really does matter. So now, a couple things about uh, mask uh, ventilation. First, like everything else, you want to do a history and a physical on the patient to see if there's anything that's going to make mask ventilation difficult. Beards, in particular, are a real, real problem. If someone has a big beard or they have a big mustache, or even if they have kind of stubble, I have a little stubble here myself, it can make it hard to get a seal, make it really hard to get a seal. So you want to see that. You also want to see if someone has a fixed neck or if they're in a neck collar or some other thing that would prevent you from doing what you like to do, which is extending their head so you can get a nice mask fit. Well, if someone has an unstable neck or they're in a collar, you can't do that. So like everything else, you have to do a history and a physical focusing on not just intubating, but how you're going to mask the person. Do they have a full stomach? If they have a full stomach, you don't want to be masking them for a real long time, but of course, you will mask someone if they're if they're desaturating. Don't you know? Don't well. I'm just going to sit here and let them desaturate. So for all those reasons, history and a physical, which is a part of everything else in medicine, is very much a part of mask ventilating too. Now, what's one of the things you can really do, particularly in patients who who are uh, have a larger BMI? Well, one of the things that can really help is tilting the patient up. Remember, if you tilt a patient up, you are taking weight off the diaphragm. You're, giving, you're making it a little easier to get the air in. You're giving yourself a little FRC. And for all those reasons, tilting a patient up, if I had a dime for every time I ran in a room and they were in trouble and I tilted the patient up and we got out of trouble, I should certainly be a rich man. And as you can tell by my dress, I'm not. So tilting them up really helps mask ventilate, helps an awful lot. So think about that. When you're mask ventilating, you're always concerned that they might aspirate, so make sure you have suction nearby. Make sure you have suction like right away. Now let's get into the actual mechanics of mask ventilation. Okay. My hand forms a pretty good seal on this side. On this side. It doesn't form a particularly good seal over here. So a lot of times I've had to ask people, hey, come over here, just push down here. Okay. If I had a gigantic hand, if I had a Shaquille O'Neal hand, I could put it all the way around, but I don't. So you want to get a good seal here. Notice my finger is on the jaw. It's on the bone. It's on the hard part, so I can lift it up. Don't put your finger on the soft tissue. Don't put your finger in the soft tissue. All you're going to create is a bruise. You're not going to really lift up. Lift up, and the idea is to lift that chin up. That pulls the tongue forward, and then you can get some air in. When you squeeze the bag, notice I'm going to do gentle ventilations. Gentle ventilations, OK? If I go like this. I'm going to probably push air into the stomach. This is no way to ventilate. Also, uh, the literature on CPR has told us that hyperventilation uh, impedes venous return and uh, worsens outcome when it comes to resuscitation. So you want to, how many times do we breathe? We breathe maybe 10 or 12 times a minute. That's the way you want to breathe. If you see that you're not moving air, if you don't see end tidal CO2, if you have access to that, if you don't see the chest rise, if it just doesn't feel right, then adjust something. Adjust their head. Notice how I extended. Again, can't do that in case of a neck injury. Extend the head. See if that helps. If that doesn't help, here's an old trick that I've only seen in one book, and that the book I wrote. Tilt their head to the side. 
a lot of times when people can't mask, somehow if you just tilt their head to the side, for some reason, I don't know why, it really helps. Tilt their head to the side. And we have airway adjuvants too. You can always put an oral airway in. You can always put an oral airway in. There's a hundred ways to put in an oral airway, but the idea is to make sure it's lifting the tongue up. Don't just jam it in there, in which case it could actually worsen things. So make sure this help, this is like that. And you mask away. Another thing that helps a lot of times when people have uh, particularly a lot of soft tissue caving in, say an OSA patient or a patient with a big BMI, a nasal airway helps too. Being, being very aware of the fact that this can cause a nosebleed. So, you know, patients on Plavix, you're going to think twice about this. But with these adjuvants in, you should be able to mask the patient. Why do I dwell so long about masking? Well, let's say you can't intubate. You might have to mask for a long time. Or you might want to mask until, say, another airway expert comes. Or you want to mask until you can get a fiber optic in the room. So it's really worth spending some time making sure you really can mask ventilate a patient. Now, I'm going to focus now on my, on my left arm. And I'm going to say, let's say we encounter a situation where we really can't intubate and we got a mask for a long time. You know, maybe you're, you're at, a, you're at a, a facility. You graduated, you're at a facility, there's no anesthesia guy ready, readily available, there's no fiber optic. You have to mask for a long time. If you mask like this, I don't care how good a shape you're in, your arms are going to get tired, okay, if you have this kind of claw-like thing. Whereas if you, watch me how I lean back now. See this? See how relaxed that is? What I'm doing now is I'm just leaning back. I'm holding the jaw. I'm leaning back. All the work's being done by my tendons up here in the shoulder. It's not being done by my bicep and by my hand muscles, which will get tired. Lean back. This is very similar to a, a, someone if you've ever water skied. If you water ski, you basically lean back, right? You lean back. And you can, you can water ski all day like that. If you try to water ski like this, you, you're, you're going to cramp up and not going to be able to water ski very long. And this is for that rare instance that I hope you don't encounter where you have to mask for a very long time. This works. This doesn't work. Okay? So that's it for mask ventilation. Quick review. Do a history and a physical. See if there's going to be something problematic about masking them, like a beard or something. Tilt them head up if you can. Obviously, an unstable patient at Trendelenburg, you can't. But if you can, tilt them up like this. Use the airway adjuvants if, if you need to. Get that, see how I got that head in a good position? Get that head in a good position. Squeeze slowly. Don't, don't do that. Squeeze slowly. Tilt their head to the side if you're not getting air in. And then put an oral and or a nasal airway in if you can't get any air in. So that's a little review on mask ventilation.